Um, let's say uh, here is a, friend, a great friend of mine who always does good service. He's called Frankenstein. Here he is. That's Frankenstein. Okay, Frankenstein is opposite a tree. And the tree is also a well, well known uh, feature of. Uh, <coughs> now, what common sense says is that my eye, Frankenstein's eyes, and maybe his nose, maybe the, the, uh, the tree uh, issues an odor, Frankenstein's eyes are filled from the tree by the appearance of the tree. It's green of leaves from uh, two-thirds of the way down, and then brown of the trunk the last third of the way down. So the tree is filling Frankenstein's senses. Maybe his, his, his nose, his eyes, his ears. He can go, if, he's, if he's a tree lover, he can go and lick the tree and he can taste the tree. Five exterior senses which feed, feed the, uh, the senses. But then, what Frankenstein does is his mind then works. And the mind is different from the senses. That needs to be proved. Modern man typically, stupidly denies it. But the mind is essentially different from the senses, and again, that will be, we'll prove it to you in a few moments. But in any case, the mind then picks up the, this is a tree. The tree is not brown and green. It's colored brown and green. But it's something much more than just brown and green. The tree, what the tree is, goes to the mind. Feed, feeds Frankenstein's mind. Oh, this is Aristotle Frankenstein. This is not Kant Frankenstein. The tree, and this is, this is actually common sense. I'm, if you think about it, what the eyes pick up is only colour. What the ears pick up is only sound. <coughs> Neither eyes nor ears pick up tree. They pick up brown, green, and the rustling of leaves. That's all they pick up. It's the mind that says something green and brown that rustles and that tastes barkish. Uh, it's a tree. It is a tree. What it is, is a tree. It's not, it is not rustling the brown and green. The rustling and the brown and green are the appearances. The appearances as they appear. What's behind the appearances is what the thing is. The senses, this is common sense, the senses read or pick up the exterior, the, the, the appearances. All five senses pick up different appearances. There's then, says Aristotle, a, a, a telephone exchange in my head which coordinates the senses, the, five, the data. Data coming in in five streams from the five outer senses. And something hooks up the sound with the... Uh, there's got to be a, a, another faculty, which is a hook-up faculty, which hook, if you stop and think about it, Aristotle is a thinker. Uh, it, it, there must be a faculty that hooks up the sound with the color so that this largely black animal, a, a black and pink thing in front of you, is what's emitting the sounds that are hitting my eardrums. And all the time my mind is reading the sounds, is reading inside the sounds. What is... <coughs> Give an example in a moment. <coughs> but in, in Latin, English is a lousy philosophy for, for language, for philosophy. Uh, English is a lousy language for philosophy. It's, uh, the only language that's worse is German. But the best uh, languages for philosophy are the Latin languages, which are closer to the Latin. Latin is the clearest and best. The church is always thunk. Think, thank, thunk, sink, sank, sunk. The church is always thunk in Latin, because it's the, it's the surest, the clearest, and the noblest. Um, but the heretics always want to get away from Latin. So the new mass is in the vernacular, the old mass remains in Latin. Okay, um, what was I going to put up? That dash did gone. Okay. Um, oh yes, 
In Latin, therefore, the word intellect says exactly what it means. See, in, in that, the intellect is the faculty of intus legere. Lego, legere, lexi, lector. Le uh, read. So the uh, intus legere, re reader within. So Frankenstein gets this streams of, of, of sense data and he reads with his mind, reads within them that it's a tree. I read within that that was food. I read within that this is a wooden floor. It doesn't look like plastic. I'm judging. The, mind, the, the eyes can't say that it's plastic or wood. They've got no idea. The eyes simply report the color. It's the mind that works on the color and says it's wood or it's plastic. Um, and so on and so on. Um, then uh, the intus ledger, the intus le the, 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 the reader within, the mind is the inside reader, the reader that reads inside. For instance, there's an example I always use, some of you may already know it, uh, but don't, don't say anything uh, for the sake of those people that, that don't get it. Because this is to prove the difference between intellection and sensation the activity of the senses and the activity of the mind. They're two different things. Okay, here's a few lines. Actually, there will be eight lines in, in all. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight lines, okay? And then a few circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's a lousy picture, but um, but it, it's the, it's a lousy piece of art, but it's sufficient for these purposes because the mind is going to correct the the, the richness of the picture. Okay, what is that? Okay, it's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. <coughs> eighteen little circles. Can anybody, can anybody who doesn't already know what it is guess what it is or see what it is? Anton. A giraffe outside the window. A giraffe outside the window. You've got it. It's a giraffe outside the window. Okay, now you're laughing. Why are you laughing? Because it was there under your eyes and you didn't see it. You see, the, 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 the senses, everybody's senses, picked up perfectly well eight lines and 17 little circles. But what is it is a different thing. It's the mind that reads within the eight lines and the 17 circles that it is a giraffe walking past a window. And there could be plenty more examples like that. So you can see there, the, the extus lector, the, the outside reader, reading just the black lines and the senses on a piece of white paper, and then the intus lector, the, the reader within, picking up what, the, what, it, what it represents, what it is. So is, isness is a function of the intellect, color and sound are functions of the eyes and the ears, or object, the correct word is object. So that's a clear um, proof that intellection, acting through the intellect, is not equals not sensation. But of course, modern man doesn't want. He doesn't want to think. He doesn't think. He doesn't want to think. He does. Modern man does not want reality. Because he, because he does not want God. Therefore, modern man has on television all of these stupid programs about how animals are just like human beings and human beings are just like animals. So, you get for the Tenevidians a nationwide program of an aquarium. <coughs> and there are two dolphins inside the aquarium. And there's a microphone stuck on the outside of the aquarium. <coughs> And the television uh, question says, what's that, Mr. Scientist? And there he is in his white coat with his deep spectacles. And he says, that's Mr. Dolphin saying to Mrs. Dolphin, 
Good afternoon. <laughs> and then, another night, a sound comes through the microphone. Mr. Scientist, what is that? That is Mrs. Dalton saying to Mr. Dalton, get lost. <laughs> and all the televideos, ooh, their dolphins are just like humans, aren't they? Stupid, 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 but deliberately stupid. <clears throat> deliberately designed to blur in poor people, poor televideos' minds, the difference between animals and human beings. Because if we are no different from animals, we haven't got free will, and then, we can, then we're not responsible for what we do, and we can go down to the tavern and enjoy ourselves whenever we like. <clears throat> so there's motivation behind the stupidity of modern philosophy and modern thinking. People don't care about God, they want to get away from God, and they want to enjoy it. And therefore, they suicide the mind, they suicide their minds, they deny that their minds are any different from their senses, they pretend it's all sensation just like the animals, or they pretend that the animals have minds, whichever way you cut it. Animals can be behave like, like uh, with intelligence, but that's their instincts. Where do the animal's instincts come from? From a very intelligent God, from a super intelligent God. The spider, why does the spider not get trapped on its own web? A fly comes and lands and the fly is stuck. The spider is walking over the, over the web all the time because the spider either walks only on the spokes of the web or he only walks on the rings of the web. Whichever it is, it's the other that is sticky. So the fly lands on both and gets stuck by whichever it is that's sticky. The spider is always walking on the one that isn't sticky. Otherwise, he would get stuck in his own head. Who planted that intelligence? Who planted that in the... It's Almighty God. Dogs seem to be intelligent sometimes. Horses seem to be intelligent. It's still only and always the instincts, the animal instincts that God planted in them. The animals have what you call spontaneity. In other words, you can't tell what they're going to do, but they don't have free will. If you see a dog coming up to a cold stream with a, a plate of red meat on the, other side of the, of, on the other side of the stream, you can see the dog coming up and going back. Oh, he's thinking. Oh, the dog is thinking. Dogs think. Dogs have minds. It's not a, it's humility. It's not only us human beings that have minds, the animals also. Why should we think that we're the only ones that, uh, <laughs> reference back, further back to this one. It's not humility to say that we human beings have minds in that it, it's the, uh, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's not pride to say that we human beings have minds and none of the other animals do. It's humility to, to acknowledge reality and to take the consequences which are, since we have free will, we're going to be able to fall into hell or to fall into heaven and we'd better do something about it. The animals don't have the choice. The animals are going to die. For them, it is curtains when they die. But for human beings, no way. Human beings live on after the soul separates from the dead, from the body, that's death. The body rots, left behind on earth, but the soul comes in front of the judgment seat of God and is instantaneously judged, it's brought in front of the judgment seat of God by St. Michael, is instantaneously judged. And then it goes wherever it, uh, God judges it that it's deserved. So, there is the difference between intellection and sensation, and that means that, um, that Frankenstein uh, Fra Aristotle Frankenstein is constant, and you and I are constantly reading within. For instance, I read within that this is a wall, it's pretty solid, and come uh, three o'clock or five o'clock uh, or midnight, I'm not going to try to walk out of the room, but it's this. It's stupid because my mind is saying this is the wall and the door is over there. There's another door here, but that's not going to go, etc., etc., etc. Et my mind is constantly reading reality. And if my mind stops reading reality, I'm fit for the loony bin. Many, many people today are, 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 are philosophically sick. They're not yet clinically sick, but they're not far from it because they've got this stupid idea that they control reality. We must come, we must move on.